Okay, we're gonna give it like five more minutes and then we'll start.
Okay, what's up everyone? We're gonna go ahead and get started um, with our resume and cover letter workshop, kicking off the first night of many for STC's online situation. Okay, so I'm, uh, wait, Jayshu, can you move to the next slide, please? <laughs> okay, your turn. Yeah, okay. So we're gonna start with introductions as usual. Uh, so my name is Jonathan. I'm a fourth year computer science and math major at UCLA. I've interned for Amazon twice, um, last summer and the summer before, once in Seattle for Amazon Go and once in Sunnyvale for devices. And I was district technology chair in the 2018-19 term. Okay, and I'm Tiffany. I'm a fourth year at UC Berkeley and I've also done internships in like New York and at Berkeley. Uh, I also have had like previous positions in Circle K um, and yeah, we're excited to tell you what we know about resumes and cover letters. Okay, so for resume, we're going to start off with a little activity. So, you know, use your imagination and pictures, picture this, you're on a deserted island, but you know, you have the foresight and pack a backpack of things that you're going to need. But, you know, since it's a backpack, you can only fit so many things. And so you're going to have to pick and choose from this list. Give yourself a couple of seconds to kind of skim over it. Think, okay, so I'm about to be stranded. What am I going to use? What am I going to need? Um, and if we can have people volunteer or like type in the chat what you think. What do you think, J2? Um, I think that there are definitely certain items on this list that are objectively better than others, but I'm waiting for other people to point them out. Okay, I'm seeing some good stuff in the chat. Uh, Ricky said machete over knife, which is a good point uh, because a knife is smaller and definitely like a lot fewer uses than say a machete, right? Um, we have some people, a lot of people saying water purifier and I'm guessing purifier over the gallon of water because we're thinking long-term. All right. Is everyone saying that you would bring a cat and dog or that you would not? Ah, interesting. Okay, okay, okay. So let's say you have this one backpack, right? <laughs> and, you know, let's say you chose a machete, a water purifier, and, you know, I'll leave one spot empty for y'all to fill in with whatever you'd like, but the point is that, you know, there's only a limited amount of space. And so you really have to think about how these things will benefit you both in the long term and in like practicality and usefulness. And so similarly, your resume also has limited space. And so you have to put yourself in the shoes of your interviewers, the recruiters, and see what they're looking for and cater your resume to that. Yeah, so along those lines, um, for a lot of people who are just starting out to make their maybe like first resume, um, what they have in mind is it's just like your list of skills and accomplishments, but really you uh, shouldn't think of it like that. You should try to think of it more like the activity that we just did where you have just this one backpack or this one page, and that one page is your only chance at landing an interview. So you have to cater it to the best of your ability to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, prioritize, include only the most important things and consider, try, yeah, try to put yourself in the shoes of the employer and see what they're looking for and then think about what you've done and what best fits into that. Don't just think, oh, I've done this, this, and this and just list it all out. Yeah, and then one other thing that we want to add is that let's say you like don't get your dream job right away, right? Like this resume isn't your like one shot. It's not your one and only chance to land a job. Uh, you can always like reapply in the future. 
or you know apply to other places as well it's the one page that you get to impress the interviewers this time but not necessarily like an ultimatum so think about it positively and so <laughs> now we're going to move on to another little activity All right, so we have this resume that we found on Google, and uh, we just want to like kind of get an idea of how much you guys know about resume building and critiquing, if there's anything that you look for in a resume, anything that typically people mess up on. Um, so go ahead and take a look at this resume and figure out if there's anything you can see that is wrong with it or anything that you like about it. And then again, just go ahead and either you can type in chat or if you're not shy, then you can unmute yourself and talk. Okay, too cluttered. Definitely, there's a lot of text on there. End parentheses. Okay, I didn't even notice that. Um, name is too small. Yeah, definitely, you could increase the name. Left aligned instead of center aligned. Um, Ooh, I like that someone pointed out that you don't need to add your full address. Someone pointed that out to me, um, like, pretty relatively recently, honestly. And they were like, yeah, you know, you never know whose hands your resume is going to end up in. Someone can just like print out, leave it on a table and forget it somewhere. And you don't want your address to just be like mass sent out to everyone everywhere. So it's, um, it's enough to just put like your city and state and like just the bare information. So that's, that's a good detail that someone noticed. Thank you, um, Audrey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these are all really good points. Um, someone also mentioned that there's, oh, Brayden mentioned that there's good um, action verbs in some bullet points, and we'll also uh, touch on that in a second, too. Okay, so some things that we noticed that were pros that, you know, you guys all have put in the chat, too. There's a clear header with a name and contact info, even though there could be some work done there as well. There's specific types and order of categories. They have an objective, they have, you know, their software languages that they know, their education, work experience, it's all in a pretty solid order. And they do have some action words and quantitative information. Let's say they say, um, you know, they save $2,000 annually. That's a really good point. Um, and more descriptive bullet points than just saying, oh, they designed blank, but they specifically said that they designed and produced the monthly paper. Um, and so that's being really specific and good. And some cons, as you guys also pointed out, uh, everything's center aligned. It's a little weird. Usually you left align your resume and it's a little bit hard to skim. There is hierarchy, like in the sense that there are categories, but say under work experience, um, employers will be looking for uh, what, what's like each item of experience that you have, what are each of the places you've worked at, and it's really hard to skim that out, out of this or anything. Okay, and we'll move on to the next activity. This one has probably a lot more things that you could point out. Um, I'll go ahead and send the links, but basically what we're going to do is you guys are going to critique Michael Scott's resume. And uh, yeah, it's just a fake resume that I made in the past. Should Shit. we do breakout rooms? I feel like now that we're here, it's a little tempting. Uh, uh, okay, sure. Wait, I don't know how to, how to unfold. Okay, here we go. How do I do this? I've never done breakout rooms before. Oh, it's right here. How many rooms? Uh, how many people do we have? We have 36 people. I don't know, but like five people per room. Okay. So do like nine rooms, maybe. Okay, cool. See you in a second.
Oh, we're still being recorded, huh? I can't say anything. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How many minutes should we go? Like five minutes. Okay. If I type in the chat, can they see it? Um, I can broadcast a message to all. Oh. Um, okay, could you say, like, feel free to make a copy and make comments? I also told them we're bringing them back at 825. Right. Wow, cool. This is how TAs feel. Tiff, I think this guy just joined. Can you? Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, we're in the middle of activity right now. Uh, we just sent everyone to breakout rooms so they could like go over this resume and, and critique it. Uh... Yeah, they have like oh, three more minutes. <laughs> oh, no worries. No worries. Oh, I can send you to a group. Do you want to do that? <laughs> it's okay. There's only two more minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was eating and then I was like, oh, shoot. I forgot about this. And then, yeah. Funny fact about STC, that's actually my first ever event I ever went to for Circle K. Aw, nice. Wait, what year? Uh, about three years ago. Three, oh, yeah. wow. Three, four years ago. Yeah. Wait, three, four years ago? 2016? Yeah, I'm pretty old. <laughs> oh, no, I was just trying to think if I went to that one. I don't think so, though. It was in um, Davis, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think I started going in 2017. Yeah, I Okay, I'm just gonna bring everyone back. I feel like it's been really long. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, is everyone back? I closed the screen before I check. Okay, now everyone is back. Uh, 23 people. Okay, everyone should be back now. All the rooms closed. Um, so we're gonna go over our critiques really quickly. Hopefully, y'all had productive conversations. Um, so that was pretty interesting, right? If you're not a fan of The Office, highly recommend. Now's the time. But we're gonna go over this fictional person's resume. And so, kick us off, JJ. <laughs> All right, does anybody, would anybody like to share via representative for your group? Did anybody like make a copy and actually comment on it or did you guys just like kind of discuss, like if you, if you actually made something then you can feel free to send it in the chat. Or since it seems like no one wants to talk, you can just type your comments in the chat. <laughs> More professional more, emails, yeah. mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. sure. Good hierarchy, yeah. What what was good about the hierarchy? <laughs> okay, so um, one good thing is that he lists like the most important positions first. They're most important not just in um, like most frequent or most recent um, in time, but also the you know, most important ones, like he was the regional manager um, for 10 years, and that's a really significant um, <clears throat> position that he held. A lot of people are saying that, um, Ram Ramy said that you don't need to put the high school GPA in SAT. This is a really good point, especially because it seems that he has more than enough work experience um, that it's not relevant anymore. I'd say that a good rule of thumb is once you're about sophomore or junior year in college, you don't need to really put your high school information. Um, yeah, could have used a more professional email address for sure. Lacked consistency. That's also a good one in like spacing, formatting, font, type. Yeah, typefaces and font weights. Yeah, yeah, like we said, once you're about like a sophomore, junior in college, then it's okay to remove high school stuff. But if you're still like a freshman, that's definitely okay. <laughs> and yeah, there's a lot of white space. Um, things aren't aligned. So yeah, it feels like everybody had some pretty productive conversations. Um, I feel pretty confident that y'all know what a good resume looks like. And yeah, yeah, using numbers, quantitative information. And it's also like Josephine said, it's unprofessional to um, like call out specific people. And also to just saying dealt with difficult employees is I'd say like an objectively not great way to really phrase that. Like you can definitely reframe it to be like you know, conflict resolution, or like you dealt with, you know, diplomacy at the workplace, and things like that. <clears throat> All right, I think you guys covered most of the major points. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and link the doc that has all of our comments on it. I think you guys got most of them though, so um, we don't need to go over it. Um, you send it and you can look at it if you want, and we'll go ahead and move on. Good job, everyone. We're gonna go over some really quick resume examples from specific industries uh, because there might be some nuances that you might really not really know right off the bat. Um, but just in general, everything that y'all have mentioned, consistent formatting, action verbs, concise descriptions, 
Y'all are pretty solid on that. Oh, oh and also save to save as PDF because you don't want your formatting to be messed up. All right, JG, take it away. <laughs> uh, okay, so the first example is for tech, and we're gonna use my resume just because. Um, okay, so a few things to point out in the tech resume that you would want to have is number one, what's the most important thing if you're in tech is probably your internships. So if you have any, um, if you don't have internships, that's fine. Just whatever is your most relevant experience. So that has to be at the top of your experience section. Um, and then you want to expand on that as much as possible. So if you say you haven't had an internship, but like you've worked on some project or you worked on a team to um, build some kind of thing over the course of a quarter or something like that, and then that's what you would want to highlight the most and make sure that you have a really um, in-depth description there. And uh, one more thing to point out for tech is that there's usually a project section because employers like to see what you've worked on before uh, because you can highlight like not only what you've built, but what skills you've picked up through those projects. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, for skills, languages is ob obviously important for like what technologies you're familiar with, like not necessarily programming languages, but uh, other stuff too. And yeah, that pretty much covers tech. Yeah, I also really like that um, JTU put the order of his categories as skills at the top um, and then education experience projects. Uh, I definitely have like a recruiter tell me to put my skills at the top because that's the thing that she would look for right away. Um, also mentioning like specifics even within experience and projects is also a really good thing. Um, and especially even better if you have job descriptions where they list out um, preferred and plus uh, languages or skills that they're looking for. It's good if you can drop those in your resume as well. Kind of just embedding them and you know really showing that you're qualified and what they're looking for. Great job, J2. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> I forgot to mention. Uh, like Tip was saying, you want to put like certain things that you know, like certain skills. So actually a lot of companies or some companies at least what they do is they'll pre-screen your resume and run it through a thing that just like looks at it and then looks for certain keywords. So like say they're only hiring people who are who know Python, then um, they'll look for Python in your resume. If it's not there, then they'll just scrap it and not even look at it. So definitely good to include a lot of the skills that you've used before. Uh, another thing that I want to point out. Uh, not necessarily specific to tech, this applies to all resumes, but under experience, I chose to, it's not strictly ordered chronologically, I chose to order it by relevance, um, because that's, because as somebody's giving your resume, they'll only spend a few seconds on it usually, and they'll just see, uh, oh, I like this, 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 and then if they see something that pops out at them, then maybe they'll move you on, because companies these days, like, if, especially if you're applying to larger companies, they look at so many resumes, they can't spend time on yours, so just make sure it's as easy as possible for them to find the information that you want them to see. Okay, next example. Okay, so this is an example of a friend's resume in business. Um, and so personally, me and JTU don't really have a lot of experience applying for business jobs, but from speaking with friends, we have gathered <laughs> It's good to put education, professional experience, leadership and skills, you know, pretty standard. But, you know, I feel like a lot of business internships and jobs uh, take advantage of cover letters that we'll mention later in our, um, in our workshop. But there's definitely a lot of more wiggle room and, you know, you're able to speak more to your experiences. Um, I know my friend really took advantage of the, her descriptions um, describing her responsibilities and her accomplishments. And that really helped boost her resume as well. Um, another thing to point out is if you have, let's say you're in like Circle K, right? And you have a lot of positions, club positions uh, in within an organization. It's good to also pick out ones that are relevant to the job you're applying for. I know myself included, you know, I used to have a bad habit of trying to fit as much as I could onto my resume, um, but I definitely had a tip point out to me that, you know, some positions are more relevant than others. And so even if you don't 
even if you can't include everything, like that's okay. You can still bring it up. Let's say like in an interview, they ask you like, oh, tell me about a time you had a disagreement with someone you worked with. Then that's a chance you can bring up a position or an experience that you didn't talk about in your resume. So you don't have to feel like you have to cram everything into like the single page. Like we mentioned earlier, pick and choose the ones that will help you the most. Cool, does anyone have any questions so far about what we've been over? Okay, cool, we, we can move on to health slash medical. Okay, I guess I'm going over health slash medical. Again, we're both like tech people, so we don't strictly have experience in these areas. Um, but just looking at the resume myself, like some things that stood out to me is um, they have all their medical experience, like with, with stuff that's related to medical stuff, like them being a scribe or being medical administrative assistant at the top. That's probably the most relevant and the most uh, important for people to see that they've done. And then if you go down a little bit, then they have like their lab experience, which is important, especially like if you're a pre-med and then you, you usually work in a lab, right? But um, once they, once they've like moved on to work for other medical related things, those are more at the top of their resume. Um, so just something interesting to point out. Um, yeah. I, yeah. I feel like a good takeaway that. from comparing these different industries resumes um, is that, you know, you can tell that there's a clear difference in the proportions of people's segments. You know, let's say like my friend in the health medical field has a lot, a lot of work experience. Um, and she did also have a lot of community organization experience, but to her, it didn't feel as weighted as um, like in field, what is that word? Like real work experience compared to like organizations, as opposed to my friend who was in business, she felt that her organizations gave her the chance to shine above her peers and you know show that she was also able to do other things outside of like the standard business internships and so it's really up to you and like you talk to other people in the industry you know alumni or people who are in the field right now to kind of get a feel for what they're looking for and cater your resume that way as well um yeah some people like to put what courses they took that are related related to their field um, it really depends, and I'd say, like, another good rule of thumb, if you'd like to do that, like, under your education, is also to really keep it down to, like, out just one line. I wouldn't make it multiple lines um, of relevant courses, especially ones that are pertaining to the specific job you're applying to. That's really good. Like, let's say if I was in tech and I was applying for, um, like, a front-end development job, I wouldn't really say that I took a class on um, like databases because <laughs> the, yeah. So let's say you just try to keep it as specific as you can to the job that you're applying for. That's why people always say to edit your resume to every job. But yeah, we're going to keep moving forward. And talk about cover letters. Wow. Everyone loves cover letters. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, is it still really necessary to do cover letters? Yes, and we'll go over that in a second. But right before, we're gonna do another little visualization activity, right? So picture this, it's 3019. <clears throat> the earth is cracking and the world is collapsing, right? And so you only have one shot, one minute, to convince them that you deserve to survive. And what do you say? Let's say um, you have a couple of options. JJ, you have, okay. <laughs> so you have a couple of options. Um, type in the chat which one you would say. Okay, we have a lot of people saying um, 
that they would say they know how to use a hatchet and start a fire. Um, we have someone, we have a couple of people <laughs> saying that they would say that they know all the lyrics to High School Musical. Um, someone saying that I've drowned multiple times. Um, and so let's say, you know, you're between I know how to use a hatchet versus I've survived an apocalypse before. Why would you say one over the other? All right, interesting input, interesting input. Okay, okay, I like it. Okay, so we have people saying hatchet because it gives a clear cut use, it's more specific and descriptive, and that is exactly right. <laughs> so saying you know how to use a hatchet, start a fire, you know, it's a clear way to say, okay, I know what I'm doing and I'm, here's why. But if you say, oh, I've survived before and I can just do it again, that could mean anything. You know, you could have survived on accident. You could have just been asleep the whole time, right? It doesn't show that you have what's necessary to survive. And so with that, we're going to move on to cover letters. So your cover letter is your chance to really humanize your application and stand out. Granted, not everybody requires a cover letter. Sometimes it's optional. Sometimes, you know, they don't even read it. But if you have the chance, you know, it could be good. So why not? <laughs> right. And you want to elaborate on why you want the specific company and position. And I feel like cover letters really make a huge impact if they're smaller companies or if it's something that you're really, really passionate about, it just shines through your writing more than if you're writing a generic cover letter to just send out in the masses. Um, but it's also your chance to elaborate on what's on your resume. And, you know, it's like your last fighting chance to tell your recruiter why you deserve an interview. Okay, so just like we did with resumes, we have an example cover letter for you. And go ahead and read it. And then again, just type in chat anything you see that you like about it or anything that could be improved. Okay, so we have some people saying some formatting related stuff. Uh, it was too short, should be double spaced, um, looks blocky, that's like formatting. Um, and people are saying it's informal. Could you expand on that? Like what is informal about it? Hey there, <laughs> desperate. <laughs> yeah, so overall this person doesn't sound very professional, like they're talking to a friend. Um, Okay, so definitely the style of writing could be improved. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of negative things in chat here. Anybody have anything good about the cover letter that they'd like to point out? Passion, for sure. Yeah, this person definitely seems passionate about the role. Their energy. Oh yeah, so I'd say overall this candidate has like definitely a personal reason and a passion that they want to have this job, but um, they they seem like they're just not very professional. They might be like a kid. Um, so like in terms of formatting and writing style, it could be definitely improved, but um, I definitely think that there's at least some good intentions. Yeah. Okay. You want to add anything, Tiff? No, I think everyone got it. I also think it's super cute. I mean, I, think, I just think they're really enthusiastic, and I appreciate that. All right, so some pros that we pointed out, and um, you guys probably already saw a lot of this, too. It is formatted like a letter, so, I mean, at least you got that right. Um, enthusiastic and generally interested, and they do mention some relevant qualifications um, since they've been with the Dolphins before. 
Um, so that's definitely important. But then some cons, as you guys mentioned, it's informal. There's a lot of grammatical errors. Formatting is not very good, and there's not very much substance to it. OK, so for content, um, we'll go over formatting in a second. But for content, it's good to touch upon you know, specifically what the position is about um, and what they're expecting from applicants. And by what they're expecting, we don't really mean like, oh, a hard worker or someone who meets deadlines, but more specific things like, you know, for example, in tech, let's say they're looking for someone who has experience with a specific framework or language that they're going to be using on the job. So you can bring that up in your cover letter um, in addition to putting it on your resume. And, you know, you don't wanna go over everything in your resume, but here's your chance to go over like your one or two most relevant experiences that you feel uh, make you suitable for the job. And you can think of specific experience, like let's say you had a project that you worked on that's really similar to the product that the team is working on. Or you, let's say you had an experience that really touched you and that's what motivated you to apply for this company and this position, then you can talk about that as well. But honestly, like you could just let a little bit of your personality shine through. You know, don't be afraid to be enthusiastic, you know, to show that you really want this job. Um, and that's why if you're writing a cover letter, it's good to really pick and choose which companies and positions you wanna write for. Because I feel like if you write like a generic cover letter that you, kind of just tweak to different jobs and don't take out that energy to <clears throat> write specifically. It just takes out the enthusiasm and passion that you actually have um, and doesn't have as much of an impact than if you put the time and effort into making it special. Um, but yeah, just same as your resume, polish it and expect it for errors. And as for formatting, it's also gonna be only one page. Um, one thing that's good to note is make it consistent with your resume. So as you saw on previous resumes, all the resumes had a header that had the name, contact information, and then some kind of divider, right? That entire header, you could just copy and paste it onto your cover letter and it makes everything look really nice and polished and consistent across your papers. Um, and it just feels a lot more professional that way too. Uh, it's formatted like an actual letter. Don't, um, don't worry if you don't know who to address it to specifically. Most of the time you won't. Uh, so you could just put it to whom it may concern. That's pretty standard. But if you do know, it's good to put it as well. Um, and same, save as PDF because uh, a lot of people also don't really like receiving <laughs> docx files anymore. And most applications are submitted like through the portal or like LinkedIn or whatever. And so whichever method you apply for this job, uh, it's good to keep your formatting consistent through saving as PDF. And yeah, these general tips we went over with the example and everything. All right, so here's another example, um, hopefully a little bit more formal than the last one. Um, we'll go ahead and take a couple minutes to read over it. And if you have any comments, once again, feel free to type in chat.
Okay, so just um, going over the quick general structure of the cover letter, they have that same header at the very top, and then date and the address. If you don't know the address, it's okay to leave it blank or just put the company name and the city that you're applying for, um, and then dear. And then the first paragraph, it's good to do sort of like an intro. This is kind of where your elevator pitch comes into play. And then the next paragraph, you talk more about your specific experiences that are relevant to the position. Uh, next paragraph, you kind of talk about what you hope to do moving forward, bigger plans, and then closing off with contact information and a thank you, and then signing off. I think that's a pretty standard format that is good to reference um, when writing your own cover letter. And yeah, someone, Rashida said, good formality, relevant experiences, shows the company was research. Yeah, those are all really good points. I really like this cover letter. Um, I also use my friend's cover letter as reference for my own, so that's how you know it's a good one. <laughs> These are some quotes that we liked from the cover letter. They're really specific. They talk about their, pre their previous experience and they talk about how they wanna move forward. And so just ask yourself when writing your own cover letter, how the experiences on your resume make you a qualified candidate, right? So this is kind of like your pre-interview interview and you're kind of anticipating the questions that they'll ask you. But yeah. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions really quick before we end the webinar? Be sure to sign in at the link and scan the QR code. Phones are very cool now. You can just go to your camera and press and hold on the QR and it should open up a link on your phone. Oof, size large. What advice thoughts do you have about job hunting during the current pandemic? Well, I definitely think that there are many, 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 many people in the same boat. And there's so much, you know, worries and anxieties around job hunting. And, you know, we both can definitely empathize. Um, but yeah, just keep going at it, you know, it's okay. There's always more companies out there. There's definitely a lot of people who are hiring for remote jobs too. Um, to, I think just a good thing is to just keep an open mind and, you know, apply wide, apply far, be flexible. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of people in the same boat. And it's also okay if you don't find anything right away, right? Everything takes time. Yeah, someone in the chat, Audrey, thank you. She said, potentially ask if they're looking to extend internships to fall. That's also a good que question to ask, um, especially if your summer one got postponed or canceled. Um, it's always good to ask about alternatives. Oh, good luck, Josephine, on your resume and cover letter assignment. Um, someone also asked if you don't necessarily have a lot to put on your resume. Let's say you have limited experiences. Um, that's okay. That's also okay. You can just put whatever you have. Take advantage of formatting. You know, don't make your fonts like size 24, but you can definitely make them like 12 and then space things out a little. Give them a little breathing room. Um, yeah, CKI also looks great on resumes. You know, you might not think it's a, like some other experiences, like let's say you're in a club, even if you're a member, like let's say you're in tech and you're a part of like IEEE or you're a part of a women in tech club, you can still put that you're a member, even if you didn't necessarily hold a position, that's also an option too. Um, yeah, you could definitely include multiple positions in a company. Um, you could put under like the same header, like let's say your header would be the company name. And then underneath you have like italics 
what specific job it was, and then bullet points. And then you have another italics for the other position and then more bullet points. Um, definitely possible to do multiple positions. It also shows that you have good like movement and um, what is that called? Upwards trajectory. If you have had multiple positions and it was like a promotion or something too. Ooh, project experience for tech resumes. Yo, honestly, like do anything you want. <laughs> like if you want to make a, <laughs> if you want to make a video game, do it. You know, if you, um, I have some friends who like, uh, who did some really cool projects. Like they make games or they also um, like compiled data and did some cool stuff with that too. Um, honestly, like, as long as it's something that you're working on a little bit every day, uh, it's okay to like do any kind of tech project really. And then for like ideas, you could just like look up um, tech project ideas. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's also what I would do. Yeah, also a lot of people make websites. Something else that you can do uh, to get a really quick project on your resume is go to a hackathon because you only have to spend one weekend and you can kind of like mooch off your teammates if they're if they're really cool and um yeah that's a really quick way to just get something on there um and a lot of hackathons nowadays um they've moved to online so it's really easy you don't have to physically go there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. people are also mentioning if you're doing design you can do like self-created projects or yeah you could also just make your own startup <laughs> um, if you don't really want to take up too much space about your previous positions, you could cut it down to like one or two bullet points. I'd say two bullet points. Um, and also you could just even take them out completely if you'd rather save that space for something else too. Wait, Loki, I thought a CV was the same thing as a resume. I think a CV is like a little bit longer, right? It's like, it could be multiple pages. I think usually it's used for more research purposes. Oh, right, 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 right. I think, I don't know, I've never made one before. CV is a summary of your experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like definitely when you're um, like older and people who are like further into the field applying for like mid to high level positions. Yeah, for like research and more experienced positions. Yes, links do work in PDFs. I also thought that was very cool. I did not really think of doing that until I saw JG's. <laughs> Cool, 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 cool. Does anyone have any last minute questions? A research product project for a medical thing yeah go for it it's definitely a good thing to link into the resume yeah the final report especially if it's like a published paper is it a published paper? oh you don't have to answer that but yeah it's also really good Um, if they ask a big brain question, then you can say, oh, can I have a second to think about that? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, take your time. And then you sit there and then you think about it. And then you squeeze out any answer you possibly can within a reasonable amount of time. 
it's okay to ask for it more time. But yeah. Okay, cool, 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 cool. I'm gonna close this. <laughs> I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna end the I'm gonna end the recording. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me or J2. We can also look over like your resumes and cover letters and stuff. Um, so feel free to send it over if you'd like us to take a look. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, have a great night.